Check out my new campsite here at Gooseberry Falls. Now, as luck would have it, I managed to snag a site right next to the bathroom with, you guessed it, hot water showers. If you can imagine, after not showering for three days, how exciting this is. Ah, can't wait to take a shower before bed. That's all I'm saying. Since, however, we've got a bit of daylight yet, I thought we'd take a quick walk down by the water so you could see the beach where Gooseberry Falls is located. I can hear the sound of the waves, I think, hitting the shore. It looked like earlier Lake Superior was going to be getting rough, I suspect. I keep using that word. I get on these kicks where I use the same word. I believe we're in for some bad weather coming up, so I wouldn't be surprised if the lake has taken a turn from the calm that it was the other day to being a little bit more rough, which would be cool if I got to show you that. Then you could see just how ferocious the waves get. One thing I did notice that I want to point out that you might find interesting is that garbage cans aren't bear proof. At least not to the extent that they were up in Upper Michigan, which leads me to believe that while it's possible you might find a bear or two around this area, I don't think we're in bear country by any means. Because I'm pretty sure bears are smart enough to figure ooh, this out. Okay, Dad. And to erase any further doubts, it says here, hunters and fishermen, anglers, are going to be more likely to run into bears because they travel and move quietly early in the morning and late in the evening when bears are most active. Which, if you know anything about me, you won't find me moving too early in the morning. Just saying. <laughs> Given how rough the lake's looking, I don't think I'd want to be out there on a day like today. And look at that, it's getting pretty rough out there. I don't know if any of you have been to Hawaii, but this actually reminds me of a few places I visited on the big island, except it was a lot warmer than it is here. I don't know if you noticed, but it's like the waves have gotten even rougher since I first walked out here. And if this is what the lake is like in September, can you imagine what it was like when the Edmund Fitzgerald went out in November? Pretty crazy to think about, huh? The winds really started to pick up here, so I think I'm gonna head back to my campsite or at least get off this windy beach. Coming off the beach, I stopped to check out the map here. And FYI, being a first timer to Minnesota State Parks, I noticed they do a really excellent job with their maps. As far as though, what we're gonna check out here at Gooseberry Falls is all dependent on tomorrow's weather. And based on old Lake Superior back there, I have this feeling that the weather isn't gonna be quite what I was hoping for, but we'll see. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow is gonna keep old sightseeing Sally from exploring a place she's never been before. Yep, taking the easy route for dinner tonight. Good old ramen. And a cup of hot coffee. Decaf, so I don't stay up all night. To warm up the insides. And yes, hanging out in the Prius because it's just a tad 
bit too windy to have a campfire tonight, at least in my opinion. I know there are some people out there that would still have a fire, but not me. I'm not going to be the one to set the forest on fire up here in northern Minnesota. When I'm done with my gourmet dinner, plan on hitting the shower and then crawling in the old tank cot and basically calling it for the night. I'll probably do a little bit of reading, maybe FaceTime Marty, you know, boring stuff when it comes to YouTube. So I thought I'd check in with you before I go do that. As I've been sitting here contemplating the finer things in life, I realize that this trip is all about a bunch of firsts for me. One of them being that this is the first adventure I've gone on without Mabel. Like, major adventure. She's gone, she had gone with me pretty much everywhere. I mean, there's a handful of times that she didn't go, but those were not necessarily adventures that I posted on YouTube. The other thing is, is this is my first time here in northern Minnesota. Like, I have never explored this area before, and there are so many awesome, beautiful places. I just wish I had more time that I could be here for several weeks, but you know how that goes. It's just not going to happen. Not this time around anyways. And this is my first time camping alone, like ever in my whole life. I've always camped with somebody else. And even though the first part of the adventure I was with Miss Scientific, I decided that why not, you know, extend my stay a little bit by myself. And so here I am. One other thing before I dig into this ramen, I wanted to give a quick shout out to, to two other people for their renewal of their patronage for me on Patreon. Both Susie and James Rockford have reinstated themselves as patrons on my Patreon. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Let's see how this bad boy is. I haven't eaten ramen probably since college. So hoping that this is a little bit better tasting than the stuff I remember from back then. Hmm. Not bad. If they would have had ramen that tasted like this back then, man, things have sure changed. Thankfully, this is one that's changed for the better. As you can see, we've had a bit of rain to contend with this morning. I've been up since about 7.30, alternating between trying to get stuff packed up in a way before it rained and drying stuff off and hanging out in the car. But now it looks like we might have a bit of a break in the action, hoping my tent dries out in the meantime, and I'm gonna go hit the trail and see what stuff we can find. Two reasons why I stopped here. One is this birch tree, Reminds me of something that I would climb on as a kid. And as an adult, it's very hard to resist just crawling out on that branch and seeing how high up in the tree I can get. And number two, just beyond this really cool birch tree, is that on the pine tree. I think they call it a burl. And to me, it looks like a huge peach or that the tree is just wearing, I don't know. Use your imagination. I'd be interested to find out what you think it looks like in the comment section below. But keep it at least PG-13 because you know how YouTube can be. That and I do like to keep the channel at least somewhat family friendly with the exception of Marty. <gasps> Kidding, Marty's not here to defend himself and I'm feeling a wee bit cheeky. Last night I was doing a little bit of reading on this area of Lake Superior and discovered why this reminded me of Hawaii so much in that these rock formations are the result of ancient lava flows, which if you know anything about Hawaii, that's exactly what Hawaii's made of. 
Well, that and current lava flows. But here, I don't think there's any volcanoes waiting to erupt. But you never know. Scientists have been wrong before. I still can't get over the diversity in Lake Superior's shoreline. You go anywhere around the lake and it's just so different depending on the location you're at. It just totally blows my mind. And other than the fact that the water is a lot colder when compared to other areas around the world, I'd say Lake Superior has some of the best beaches I've seen in my entire life. And that's saying a lot because I've been to quite a few beaches because, you know, love my beach. Definitely worth seeing in person if you can make the trip. And if you had any doubts about the power of Lake Superior, here's some fun facts for you. As you've probably heard me say in a past video, waves on this lake can get huge anywhere between 10 and 20 feet, maybe even more during a bad storm. And as you might have guessed, there have been a ton of shipwrecks on this lake, over 350 of them, including the most famous one, the Edmund Fitzgerald. Another fun fact is that Lake Superior is so big and cool, it modifies the local climate. On average, it's 5 to 20 degrees warmer in winter and then 5 to 20 degrees cooler in summer. And if that wasn't enough, the lake itself is super cold with temperatures rarely getting above 40 degrees. And it also happens to be the world's largest freshwater lake by surface. As much as I'd love to just sit here all day talking about Lake Superior and staring at the water, I know if we don't get moving, we're going to miss out on a few other features of this park. So, onward we go. Because if you didn't know, I'm only staying one night, which was last night. And then I'm packing her up. I have to be out by four. A lot of my campsite by four, but I intend to be out probably between two and three, depending. And I'm moseying on towards home. In case you couldn't figure that out for yourself, we got this little reminder for you. Although, I'm pretty sure there are some people that either A, won't heed the warning anyway, or B, you know. By the way, this is Gooseberry River, in case you were wondering. And this is what happens to a Mylar balloon when you release it into the environment. Just gonna pick that up and bring it along until hopefully we can find the proper receptacle to dispose of this thing. Getting back to what's ahead, I'm not too sad about going home because I know that there are new adventures just around the corner and I can't wait to share with you our exciting news. But you're gonna have to wait, because I'm not divulging it now. Here's a view of the river. There's supposed to be a bridge up ahead that we can cross over and head to, you guessed it, a waterfall. If you look through the trees, that's where we're headed. And there's the footbridge that's gonna bring us there. And we're right here on the map and need to get to here. Maybe five minutes more walking. Maybe we should time it and see if I'm right. It's at 18.40 on my watch, which I'm tracking my hike and forgot to turn it back on when I paused it way back. So my total trip isn't gonna be accurate, but well, who cares? It's just an estimate of my activity for the day, right? Well, I guess I wasn't too far off in my estimate. And for the moment, you've all been waiting for the falls. Well, here's something history buffs will find interesting that I discovered along the trail. 
According to this placard, this hinge pin and truss segment came from the original Gooseberry River Bridge. Constructed in 1925 and widened in 1937, the bridge was replaced in 1996. It's always cool to find historic artifacts when you're out on a hike, don't you think? It's decision time. Do I take the spur back to the visitor center parking lot and head back to the campground, or do I continue on to the fifth waterfall? Decisions, decisions. What do you think, sightseers, I'm gonna do? According to my little handy brochure, it's about a two mile loop for me to go along the Fifth Falls Trail. Question is, do I have enough time? The thing is, it's now one o'clock and I had wanted to leave by two, 2.30, but you know, I could leave by three, 3.30. I gotta be out of my campsite by four. So I'm thinking, you know, roughly it takes me about 17 minutes to walk a fast mile. Well, 16 minutes if I'm pushing it. And, you know, we're hiking through rugged terrain. So, you know, it's probably an hour for me to do the entire loop without stopping. But if I'm gonna stop, I'll be added in there. I think I can get back to my campsite by three. So we're gonna go for it. And that's the direction I'm going. I made it to the falls and then backtracked to here because I thought this vantage point would probably give you the best view overall. Plus, I had passed some people on the trail and then when I went to stop up by the falls, they passed me again and it was like I didn't want to pass them a second time. So I waited, backtracked to here, and now hopefully by the time I'm all done, they'll be far enough ahead that I won't have to pass them again. Anyways, this is the view. I get that not all of you get into the nature camping videos. I can tell that from the view counts. And maybe some of it's more for my benefit than it is for you because of what it does, what nature does to revive me, what it does for my soul. And, and in doing that, it gets me prepared to get back out and shoot like historical small town videos but there is another reason that I do bring you all along on these types of adventures and that's to show you all the beautiful spaces that exist in our country, especially here in the Midwest. I know I've done a lot in Wisconsin, my home state, and I've been expanding up into like Upper Michigan and now Minnesota. And the reason being is that a lot of people think the Midwest is basically cornfields, cows, and cities. And clearly, it's not. Hopefully some of you will expand your horizons then and either join me virtually on these adventures or get ideas of places that you too can explore. Well, in the interest of time, it is now 2 p.m. and I still have the journey back. So I'll probably be putting the camera away. Maybe I'll shoot a few shots of the waterfall, but there won't be any more because I need to get boogieing if I'm gonna make it out of my campsite by four o'clock. Making it out of the campsite at the nick of the hour. I needed to be out at four. However, I now have car problems. No freaking dash lights and the car won't shut off. All I need to top off the trip is some good old fashioned car problems. After swearing up a storm, multiple phone calls to Marty, maybe not necessarily in that order, I was able to make it this far. I'm at a quick trip, 
having something to eat because being hangry on top of everything has just made it 10 times worse. I was able to download an app to track my speed, so at least I have a speedometer now. Sounds like it's something that's going to have to reset the computer, which Marty was going to have me try, except I got all that shit back there. It's raining and really no place to do it. And then besides that, if it wouldn't work and cause further problems, then I may not even get home. So we've decided that we're going to just go for it. As long as the car's running, stays running, and I'm just going to have to keep track of the time because it's not keeping track of the mileage right now. Keep track of the time and fill up every couple of hours. I should, God willing, make it home, no problem. Baby,